The Venerable Bede, the 7th and 8th century Northumbrian monastic who stands as the first noteworthy literary figure in his native England, also demonstrates the problems associated with identifying the beginnings of English literature. A productive and prolific Latin writer who, as is evident on this slide, wrote about calculating time, establishing church calendars, and offered commentary on scripture and saints, Bede is best known for the Historia Ecclesiastica, or the history of the English people. Selections of this work are found in your text, along with useful and appropriate contextual material. As always, please feel free to pause and Google if you wish to learn any additional points about anything related in this presentation. It is important under to understand that by the standards of the 8th century, England was a cultural backwater and London was a place of minimal significance. The Celtic peoples pushed to the north and west were identified by Bede as Britons, and the prominent regions were occupied by Angles and Saxons. These included Mercia, or the Midlands, and Wessex, or the lands of the West Saxons. Most important, however, were the Northumbrian regions of the north. On the map you see the sites of Lindisfarne and Wearmouth and Jarrow. These were important monasteries, economically powerful and politically influential, and each housed a noteworthy collection of manuscripts in a well-stocked library. In the cultural backwater that was 8th century England, kings ruled by region, largely according to the ethos shown in the poem Beowulf. The work of establishing literacy, advancing service, and ministering Christianity was left to the monastics, and in Bede's England we see two distinct strains of monastic culture. These were the older and more isolated Irish or Celtic monasteries established in the 5th and 6th centuries, which developed their own methods of worship, liturgical practice, and reckoning of key Christian holidays like Easter Sunday. This strain of monasticism stood opposed to the Roman practices, more recent and more directly aligned with the Papist practices advanced in Rome. Here are some distinguishing features of each strain in some of the key monasteries that existed across England, with the Roman strain more prominent in the southern regions and the Northumbrian strain combining elements of both, influenced equally by the Roman and Celtic traditions from monasteries in Scotland and Ireland. Here are a couple of noteworthy images that show the overlapping character of the Roman and Irish monastic traditions. In the comparable color schemes and richly detailed ornamentation, we see the finest traditions of handmade manuscript production, the first from the Northumbrian Lindisfarne Gospels of the 7th century, and the second from the Irish Book of Kells dated to the 8th century. It is important to regard these texts not just as scriptures serving a monastic community, but also as commodities showing each community's wealth, as shown in the elements of book production, a process that required producing the vellum, or the pages of sheepskin, and preparing the many dyes and pigments that appear in each example. Additionally, the illustrations themselves show a high level of artistry and an elaborate an elaborate sense of design. Both page samples capture the level of artistry evident in the monastic scriptura, or space where these manuscripts were created and illuminated. Another 8th century manuscript of note was the so-called Codex Amiatinus, modeled after the 4th century Latin translation of the Bible, or the so-called Vulgate Bible, translated from earlier Greek and Hebrew versions by St. Jerome, acting under the directives of then Pope Damasus I. 
Showing the same rich visual detail and painstaking textual characteristics, the co codex was produced at, at Bede's Monastery of Wearmouth and Jarrow, two monasteries customarily grouped together because of their proximity. In the early 8th century, it was intended as a gift for the Roman Pope Gregory II. As such, it resided until recently in Italy, and only very recently returned to England. Bede was living during the composition of this document and likely had some role in that effort. Elsewhere in his ecclesiastical history he describes events at the Synod of Whitby held in the year 664 CE when the traditions of the Irish and Roman churches were compared and the Roman influence prevailed in re-establishing uniform and accepted church customs and practices. Here are some other key events described in Bede's ecclesiastical history. Surviving in multiple manuscripts, Bede's work doesn't completely align with the idea of history in our modern understanding of the term. Even so, this work nevertheless provides an assessment of key dates and developments across England from the so-called Dark Ages. Of particular note is the process of England's Christianization as revealed in Bede's accounts of miracles and particularly and the particularly the vivid demonic encounters he describes. The last three bulleted matters on this list are also those described in your reading, and I fo hope you find this dis distant material as fascinating, fascinating as I have over the years. I hope you enjoy this week's reading and thanks for listening.